in this session, we are going to review how to run or how, it's better I said how to teach different skills. Today, we are going to talk about teaching speaking skills and listening skills. And in the next webinar, we are going to you, review how to teach uh, reading and writing. So far, you had sessions on it. So please share your uh, ideas, okay? So for teaching uh, speaking skills, before, uh, no, no, uh, I want to pass this because we are a bit late. So, for teaching speaking, can you tell me uh, what are sub skills of speaking? Any ideas? When you no, I don't have teach any speaking, idea. when you want to teach speaking, uh, just think about the enabling objectives. Okay, enable. Okay. What do you need to teach? Uh, when you are working like on speaking uh, skills, mm -hmm. uh, the students might learn whatever will be your objective by using different method uh, methodologies. Like uh, you can use CLT method uh, methodologies, or you can use uh, any other and enable your objective that the students might learn this and this and that, uh, this and that. Maybe this thing. Thank you. Thank you. So they need to learn lexical and functions. Yes, mm -hmm. mm. lexical and functional, talking about appropriacy. So lexical and functional aspects are very important. Proper vocabulary, proper functions. Uh, let me give you an example. For uh, you, you're working on birthday party. Mm -hmm. mm. The conversation or the speaking part is on birthday party. How to make invitations? What function do you use when you want to make uh, invitation? Would you like something when it is very formal? How to make suggestion? Why not? Let's. What about? So these are functions, okay? And uh, proper. I'm sorry. Proper vocabulary, okay? Even register is important. The way that you talk formally or informally to your friends. Yes, Bushra, what do you want to say? What is the actual meaning of lexical? It means uh, vocabulary. Okay. Basically, it means words and vocabulary. Also, accuracy. Okay. The pronunciation and grammar, both. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for example, in, in English, stress is very important. Words has a stress syllable, like develop or interesting. Even we have stress words in a sentence, like, um, how do you like your coffee? So stress is on coffee. Or the first time I traveled to Paris. So the, I mean, Paris is an important word. And I want you to get your attention to the city. So I put stress on Paris. Or um, when you say, I went, to, I went to the mall yesterday. So I'm talking about time. Time is more important. So you put even stress on a word in a sentence based on what you want to say. Okay, and correct syntax means correct structure. Fluency is also important. Well, what do I mean by fluency? Any ideas? Uh, uh, fluency is writing proper sentences like it should be connected to each other. Uh, okay. If you are writing anything that uh, under the sentence, they are connected to your main objective or your goal. It is not like they're just uh, your goal and your the enabling objectives are not matching with each other. Thank you. Thank you. Also means talking, fluently talking means without pauses. Without pauses. There is no, uh, um, um, you know, without pauses, fluently talking. And effective interactions. Okay. So the sounds, nuts. The way that you encourage the uh, 
I'm on mean, the other side to continue speaking. Okay. So you say, I see. Oh, really? No way. Oh. So it's it makes the, your conversation more natural. More natural. And body language. Body language. Uh, do you think the body language is the same for I mean, in all languages, for all people around the world, they have the same body language while they're talking. I mean, when you talk your mother tongue, your body language is the same as you talk in English or it's different? What do you think, Bushra? Uh, sorry, can you repeat it again? Sure. Do you believe that body language and speaking different languages are the same or different? Uh, they are uh, speaking different languages. I guess they are same. Oh, okay. Just think about think about your mother tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, you have some gestures. Mm -hmm. You have some gestures yeah. that is meaningful in Pakistan. Yeah. But people from other countries, they don't understand it. That is your well, body language. So it's going okay. to be different. It's going to be different. Okay. It is not like that body language that uh, I am asking water uh, in my mother tongue. And similarly, the other person is asking water in uh, their native language. So is it the same? Or no, for it's example, usually, the body and... language is usually different. Let me give you an example. Okay. So, um, in English, when you want to say no, you do this. Mm. No. But I know in Persian, when they want to say no, they say no. I mean, nothing is different. So, that, that's an example of body language. Okay. okay. And readiness. Ready to respond. It's not just one person is talking, the other one is listening. And then it said. Okay, pass your turn. And then the other one is talking. So speaking naturally means have effective interactions and readiness. Fluently talking with correct grammar and proper words. Okay. So right. features of body language like eye contact. In many languages, while they are talking, maybe they don't look at their each other's face. Okay, but for example, in English, they look at each other while they're talking or even even your gestures, posture, facial expressions different. So these are different features of body language. Another example in English, when they want to ask you to call me and say, give me a call, huh? give me a call. But in many languages, they say, give me a call. See, so even gestures are different. Good. So body language yeah. is also important. But how do you think you can practice body language with your students? Because it makes the while you are talking, if you use the same body language, it makes it more natural and more understandable. So how do you practice body language with your students? One could be you as a teacher, be a correct uh -huh. mother. Mm -hmm. Be a correct model for your students. Okay. Uh, like uh, if I am teaching in the class, I will uh, definitely uh, keep it in mind that uh, I will connect uh, my uh, I will connect myself with my students with my eyes, with my facial expressions, That's and That's with true. my gestures also. For example, if uh, a kid has done very well, then. And he has asked, uh, he has answered me brilliantly. So I will say, give me a high five just to an air, yeah, just to encourage him. Or uh, if uh, I will put a stress on different uh, sentences if I'm uh, talking something, if I want to emphasize on, on a particular thing. So my uh, facial expressions would be changed. So it is very necessary to put uh, body language during the class. Otherwise, it might be uh, very boring. So that's, you should, so uh, yeah. that's so true. So one sample is teacher. The other sample could be you prepare short videos and ask your students to watch and shadow it while they are talking. They try to use the same or imitate the same body language. That's going to be a good practice too. 
Uh, uh, hello, Shazia. Good to you. You can join us. So we are talking about sub skills of teaching speaking. Also, the the other one was accuracy. So, um, teacher who concentrate on accuracy help their students to produce grammatically correct written and spoken English. You know, in lower levels like A1, A2, even B1, the focus is on fluency, that students speak fluently, okay? Maybe they make grammatical errors, but still you encourage them to talk. So the concentrate is just using the language. The meaning is more important. The meaning is more important. But when they get to higher level, like B2, C1, and C2 for sure, the focus of teacher is on accuracy. So the now, now that they can talk the language, they use proper structure, proper words. Activities for fluency, that the students uh, get more fluent, talking without pauses. Like you can, for lower level starter, you can ask them to repeat sentences with correct intonation and correct pronunciation, of course. And even at the very beginning, you start chatting with your students. So in your online classes, you can have three or four, or in your face-to-face -face classes, four or five minutes, just chatting, talking about their weekend plans, daily plans, and their interests or hobbies. Why they are chatting, they, they feel, they, they are talking about something that they like and they know the words, so they are very fluent on it. And uh, also, another practice could be like shadowing, they listen to a recording and practice repeating words with the same difficult vowel sounds. So you can prepare them short recordings, email it to them, and ask them to shadow, means listen, part by part, try to repeat and they record themselves on their cell phones and listen to themselves and check, assess themselves, how similar they are with the original one. Uh, also, it could be students work in pairs and they listen to each other and give comments, okay? And talking about something that it's easy for them to talk, like about matches, about the school subjects, some things which is not very difficult for them. Even you can ask them, uh, they prepare monologue about their hobbies and give them five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, depends on the level and it depends on the topic. And say, so, okay, you have two minutes to talk about this question. You have three minutes to talk about the main problems in your neighborhood, but they need to get prepared. They need to get prepared. So you even you give even uh, it could be an assignment for the next session, or you give them thinking time. You have four minutes to think about it. Then you start talking about traffic in your city for two minutes. So preparing monologue also will help. And uh, what's more, you can ask them to. Uh, learn a list of useful chunks, and then they come and uh, role play a dialogue with their partner. So the m most important thing is the topic is not very difficult. It's not very difficult. It's easy because the focus is on fluency. It's not very difficult. It's easy and they know the functions of vocabulary. With just practicing with our students to use what they know fluently without pauses. Another aspect which help your students to speak more in your class, building up good rapport with the students. How could you build good rapport with your students? Greet them personally as they write start to ask them one or two questions. Hey, how are you? You were asked in last session. 
even in your online content. Good to have you here. Okay, how's everything? How do you feel today? Okay, guys, tell me what have you done recently? Mm -hmm. We never forget praising our students. When they say something like, ah, I've started a new class, I'm going to the music class. Oh, wonderful. Bravo. I read a new book, actually. I've started reading a new novel. Wow, I love that. So I guess one time you should tell us what, I mean, at the end of the class, two or three minutes, just tell us what's the, what's the book about. Mm -hmm. So praise them. We need to call our students with their, and their first, first name. So never say you or number one, number two, number three, <laughs> call them by their first name. Um, I myself usually in my, I mean, that's easy in online classes because you can see the name. But sometimes I take notes because um, I have many classes and at first it's very difficult to remember all name, names. So I write it down for myself. And we are always positive. Think about move up activities for teenagers and young learners, an interesting topic for adults. So if you want to have good speaking class, everybody participate. So we need to choose interesting topics. When we want to start our class, we always start with warm up activities. So even when uh, you are to writing your lesson plan, you need to write the introduction part, warm up activities. So what's your, how do you start the class? We cannot start teaching at the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. So what is the warm up? If any activities you want to do, you need to warm up, warm up first. If you want to play, I don't know, tennis, you cannot just go and take a racket and start with playing. You need to warm up, okay? So even speaking in another language, that's the same. Warm up activity, just to shift from the other language to, to this language of the class. Like you speaking Spanish, so they're, they're speaking English all the time. So you want to, they want to shift from English to Spanish. Think about nice, short, four or five minutes and interesting warm up activities. It could be uh, interviewing one another. You can say, okay, you put them in breakout rooms in your online classes so, and give them time to talk to each other, ask them, each other some questions. You can have easy games or a speaking tasks like this one. So find someone who has to speak English on the telephone every day. Go shopping every day. Find someone who has to play musical instrument or someone who has to work at weekends or someone who has to work in the evenings or do lots of homework every day or drive a lot. So if you put them uh, in breakouts, groups. So if you have 10 students, you can uh, divide them two, five, and two breakouts. And they have time, give them two or three minutes and they ask each other these questions. Then everybody backs to their real hall, I mean the first hall that they can hear each other. And they say, now introduce your friend. And say, okay, I would like to introduce my friend Tom. Uh, whose nickname is Tummy. He speaks English on the telephone a lot because he works in a company. Okay, and they start to uh, introduce their friends. You build up rapport between the students and in the class. Also, you're working on their fluency because already they practice and then they report it to the class. And that's a very good warm up. Uh, for teaching speaking, the students need to learn interactions. If you see your students use the specific chunks a lot, like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So write it on the board, okay? Instead of repeating, I don't know, you can say, I have no idea. I don't have a clue. I'm not sure. It's me. 
That's a really good question, but the answer is not on top of my head. I'm not really sure. Okay, so teach them how to use different chunks. Phrasal verbs also, also phrasable. Students in English especially, they have problems on using proper phrasal verbs. But how do you work on dialogues? So, you know, the aim is to become more fluent and confident in conversation. So we remember there are three main stages in teaching. So in pro uh, process part in your lesson plan, you write about pre, while, post, always pre, while, post. How do you prepare your students for the lesson or for this part? How do you practice with your lesson and uh, with your students, I'm sorry, and how do you get the feedback? So for presentation, we always start with elicitation. Elicitation was activating their background knowledge mm -hmm, and lead them to the new garden, which is the target language, okay? to the new subject, or put them in the context, contextualization, put them in the context. So just start thinking about it. If it is about shopping in malls, so start asking them some questions. How often do you go shopping? Do you like shopping? Where do you usually go for shopping? So they know all these things. If they wanna talk about uh, their family, so we say, how many are you in the family? In the, for different levels. If they are going to talk about environments, okay, what are the main issues of, um, in your neighborhood or in the world? Okay, so can you talk about natural disasters? Have, do you have any experience? Have you ever heard anything on the news? What are your recent news on or current news on natural disaster in the world? So Google it and let me know. You know, so that's elicitation. Put them in the picture. So even you can write it on the board and give them one or two minutes thinking time, Googling, and then start talking like brainstorming. So for pre, we always put the students in the context. What's next is, uh, I wanna tell you here. Oh, oops, here, I'm sorry. So we are still in pre, okay? What is next is the new words or the keywords. Look here, this is, an, uh, this is a dialogue for elementary or let me say for starter beginners. Teaching to lower level, as you know, is more difficult than higher levels because in higher levels they can speak the language. So it's, I mean, it's much easier to talk to them. But in lower level, they don't know the language that much. So that's why I put this dialogue. Here said, um, tell me something about your family. Would you want to know? Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have two older brothers and a younger sister. Do they look like you? Not really. So mm, the students maybe don't understand not really or look like, but not really they can guess it, but look like, I'm not very sure. So that's the key word, that's the key word. If they don't understand look like, they cannot answer to this question at all. So what happened? We need to pre-teach the keywords. We need to pre-teach the keywords. In pre, put the students in the context, pre-teach the keywords. So that's very easy, I show them this picture. Do you remember that cartoon? Brave girl, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, look at this. This is Nancy. Okay. She really looks like the brave girl. Yes, look. What about you? Do you look like anybody in your family? Do you like your mom and, I don't know, grandma? Or do you look like your dad, uncle, or grandpa? And you ask them some questions. Good. What is next? Intonation. 
what do you want to know? So I have to work on intonation, also pronunciation. In English, pronunciation of W is challenging. It's not what, it is what. It's not brother, it's brothers. So TH and W is challenging in English. So I remind, I mean, I remember that I have to work on the intonation for WH questions and pronunciation for W and TH. But keep this a bit later. So what I'm going to do, number one, in pre, put them in the context. Let's review. Pick them, put them in the context, pre-teach the keywords. Number three, in dialogue parts, I always start with listening skill. I ask my students to close their books, okay, or just listen and ask them one or two general comprehension questions because they need to comprehend the dialogue first before producing it. So I said, I want you to listen to the dialogue and tell me about Brandy, how many siblings or how many brothers and sisters does she have? And then listen and say, okay, two brothers and one sister. Good, good job. Now open your books, listen again, and say, who is the oldest? Mm -hmm. Or who is the youngest? For example, something like this. Um, the brothers are older than her, and the sister is younger than her. But this, this, for the second time, they listen to the dialogue and they can look at the conversation. They can look at the conversation. You can ask detailed questions or give them true false, true false sentences. Mm -hmm. Here we get to while because we start practicing. We start practicing. The books is open and we start practicing. You can even ask them to repeat the second line. What do you want to know? Okay, everybody, what do you want to know? And show it by your hands. What do you want to know? So practice the intonation. Even pronunciation, what? So you said it, what? You said it, what? Want, excellent, want, want. Brothers, uh-huh, brothers, but sisters. So the TH, the. The, and you practice this the, in while stage we practice the pronunciation and intonation give them time to practice together mm -hmm. in your online classes you can show them even in your in person or face-to-face -face classes if you have lcd in your class or you can share your laptop with the students so ask them to fill in the blanks tell me something about your family. What do you want to know? Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have two older brothers and young sister. Do they look like you? Not really. No, so not really means they look like each other or no one is a no. Oh, okay. Make it more challenging to your students. This is practicing time making more challenges, it helps them to remember. We never ask them to memorize because if students memorize something, they will forget it very soon. But they are practicing. In this way, they become more fluent and they practice the correct uh, structure. So they're gonna be more accurate as well. Finally, for post, it's a time that they you get the feedback and they produce the language that they have learned. You say, okay, you can interview your friend. You can ask, do you have any aunts or uncles? You can ask, do you have any cousins? You can ask, do you have any close friends? Yeah, you can ask these questions. So make up your own dialogue. And then we listen to them. We listen to them. If they need any help, we give them feedback. So that is post. 
the important thing is we we try that we have kind of activity and we have kind of class management that all learners talk a lot okay so when you put them in breakouts and you go to I mean teacher can go to the different breakouts room and listen to them you will monitor them and since they are in smaller group they can talk more okay they can talk more and you can give them feedback or uh, you can give them feedback and uh, help them if they need any help help them uh, with the words or with the structure even you can give them some practice on uh, word stress so it is excellent so even you can ask them to repeat gorgeous excellence of stress is in the first syllable but ridiculous is the second syllable or delight at second syllable so working on stress just like this you can give them a list of words and ask them this this could be this could be um, as an assignment give them a list and ask them to put in the table that's a very good practice on uh, stress and syllable, which is very important, which is very important for their fluency. These are very good apps to improve their pronunciation in English. This is for English. I'm not very sure if it is in other languages, but you can Google it and definitely you can find it. Um, so you can introduce these. First, you check it by yourself and see if it is appropriate for your students. So you can recommend. But these are the 10 best uh, apps to improve their English pronunciation. Talk using correct intonation and correct stress help students to be more understandable. So maybe they use correct vocabulary, but because the the stress and intonation is not right in its or it's not a right intonation in sentence so I mean people cannot understand them that's important it could be a very good assignment so look at this picture and write a dialogue for it you can start by asking wh questions look at this and say two sentences about this to your partner Look at this question and write three or four WH questions and check the intonation and pronunciation. Mm -hmm. More challenging, I want you to write a dialogue or a conversation or practice a conversation with your partner for this picture. Or give them something like this, prompt, so I want you to build up a dialogue. This could be an assignment too. Here, yeah? coffee or tea, milk or sugar, you're welcome. So they use correct functions. Would you like coffee or tea? Or let's have coffee. What about you? You like coffee or tea? So it depends on them. Let them be creative. Let them be creative. So that could be another assignment. Or even this one, even this one, make a conversation. Look at this and make a conversation. So far, high level, it works. Okay, everybody, do you have any questions so far? For speaking? No, not that. No. Okay, so here's another one. Here's another one. You can give them, I mean, instead of asking them to introduce themselves all the time, so we can give them cards. And said, now, for next time, I want you to introduce yourself as Albert Einstein. Or I want you to take a role of your favorite scientist, favorite author, favorite singer, favorite actor, favorite character, and talk instead of him or her. It's a good work on fluency as well. These apps, English Conversation or Fluent Your uh, Language, 
here in Fluent Learn Language with videos, they are very short uh, podcasts on different topics. This is good for shadowing, they listen, and they can see the body language as well. English conversations on different conversations. So that's a very good model on sample. Now, before going to uh, listening, I want to stop it uh, here and see if you have any questions. So guys, mm -hmm. let's review listening and get listening skills. You know how important it is listen, uh, that encourage our students to listen every day to the target language. Because people who speak well normally listen well. And it is a very important skill uh, as they learn the language naturally. Okay? And you know what is active listening? Active listening is we are not talking like radios, okay? <laughs> like mass media. Active listening is constantly you ask students questions, give them the activity, get feedback. So from the very beginning of your class to the very end, we need to engage our students. That's active listening, okay? There are two listening actually, that you are two types of listening you are working in the class, intensive and extensive. The intensive listening, the intensive listening is like the listening that they have in their material, in their uh, course book, or the material that they study. Extensive is something that they like to listen. So teaching intensive listening is different from teaching extensive listening. For teaching intensive, we work on two approaches, top down and bottom up. So in process part, Okay, you need to write what uh, what activities you prepare for top down approach, what activities you prepare for bottom up approach. Top down approach means working on comprehension part. Bottom up approach is working on linguistic part. So for top down, what general comprehension? or a detailed comprehension question you're gonna ask your students, like true, false, true, false sentences, they listen and decide whether they are true or false, like asking and uh, answer to the short answer or long answer questions, like asking for the gist, what was it about, where did they go, or scanning for specific information, tell me the name of their, uh, receptionist so they have to listen very quickly to very carefully to find the specific information or d different details about it listening for imitation so I want you to listen and interview exactly the same so take notes and then interview your your partner asking for the mood of the speaker attitude so what do you think? Why she was very angry? What she, I mean, do you listen to her? Do you think she was angry, angry and say, yes, she was very angry. Why do you think? Why she was very angry? Okay. So then they started to discuss or brainstorm. Even listening for the speaker's intention. Why they're listening, you get the pause and say, and tell me, can you guess what will happen next? What will happen next? So these are all working on their comprehension. That is top down. Bottom up is a part that you ask for pronunciation. You ask for, yes, you ask for pronunciation. You ask for intonation. You ask for specific word spelling. You ask for uh instructions so it's a linguistic part for comprehension lower levels you can ask them to repeat you can ask them to color match it okay act listen and perform action like 
like uh, stand up, sit down, go to the door, point to the ceiling, so they listen and they perform action. Labeling, matching pictures with the sentences, classify sentences, these are different uh, activities for lower levels. Back to the stages for your lesson plan, pre, while, post. So in pre, we put the students in the context. Pre-teach the keywords, if there are any keywords that help the student to understand better of the listening, we need to pre-teach the keywords, not all the words. We give them chance to guess the meaning of some new words in the context, but not the keywords. Let me give you an example. If the whole listening is about making um, strawberry jam, and they don't know the meaning of strawberry and jam, they won't understand anything of the listening. So we need to pre-teach the keywords, the strawberry and jam. Put them in the context, contextualize. But we are not going to talk what is the whole listening, but we can say the whole, the listening is about Matthew and Matthew with his new job. What about you? Do you work? Is that new? How long have you been working? How do you like your job? So they are in the context. Give them the activity. Listen, answer to these questions. Listen and tell me, uh, does he like the job? Listen and tell me how long has he been working in that company? So there is, there should be a name for listening, okay? What is the aim of the listening? Give them the activity, play it for them. In while, the answer to the questions, you give them prompt, you correct them, you put them in breakouts and they talk to each other about the listening, you do the activity and in post, you check the answers, even, even you ask them to talk about the moves the, or, uh, or the role play. It depends, it depends to the level and different activity. I wanna show you, oh, here, here's an example. What was Mario's hidden talent? When did he start to use his talent? How did he use his talent to change his job? This is working on top-down comprehension. But when you ask them, I want you to listen and fill in the blanks, it is bottom-up because they have to write exactly the word. They should understand the meaning of the word and fill in the uh, blanks with the word. So it's all working on intensive. For extensive, anything that they like. They can listen to music, fill in some blanks. They can listen to the audio book, come to the class and talk about it. They can listen to the news and then for next session in warm up, talk about the current news of their neighborhood. Um, you can, uh, email them short uh, stories and they choose, for example, you, you can email them three or four different genres and they listen and come to the class and say so which one do they like or which one uh, have they listened and talk about it. So uh, intensives only work on top down comprehension. We don't work on bottom up the new words and it shouldn't be very difficult for students. 75% they should understand it. So here is an example. The song Englishman in New York by Stink. So they listen to it and fill in the blanks and say, what do you think about the song? Do you like the song? What, what's it about? So that's extensive. When you want to write your lesson plan for skills, so here, you put the title, the topic, what is the what is the skill or what's the what's the topic what is the topic like uh working in a company or work how many students level of your students average age these activities for adults teenagers or young learners for young learners you definitely need to write the age eight to nine ten to twelve but for adults, you just write the dogs and write about their interests and professions. That's important because we, I mean, it's important since 
while you're um, planning the activities, it should be checked. Have you considered their interests? If they're all housewives. Mm -hmm. So the activities should be around their own world. That's interesting, something that they like it. If they're all business women or businessmen, so it's mostly around work, economy, currency, and these things. So the ingress and professions. What's their first language and cultural background? As I said, in many languages, pronunciation of CH, W, and S at the beginning of the word is difficult in English for them. But in some, maybe in some languages, the, the first language is not, I mean, the French, no, it's not very difficult. But I know it is very difficult for Spanish, Persian, and Indians, it's difficult for them. So what's their first language and culture back? Time. Is it one hour, two hours, 45 minutes? And environment. Is it online, in person? Is it in school or a private class? What material you use? You need to list all the materials. Link for the videos. Attach the audios. If you use markers, boards, mini boards, Realias, um, pictures, posters, everything should be attached. Introduction, how do you start your class? You can talk about the warm up here. Terminal objective, which is the main aim of the session. Students will be able to do what? Okay. Enabling objective, what are the skills? What is the list of the vocabulary? Attach the list of new words. What about the grammar, pronunciation, intonation, everything that you need to teach your students to get to that terminal objective? Then you write the process, mm -hmm. pre while post, the, the steps, interactions, solo, pair, whole class, group, time, five minutes, two minutes, three minutes, okay? Appendix is all the material that you need. And what about the assignment? Follow-up activity, okay? Follow-up activity. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, it's time to ask. No, this is all about conversation activities, not the lesson plan. Uh, the lesson plan format that uh, so Daniel has shown us, it is similarly to the conversation activity. So it, uh, can we do that? That's, a, while that's the, the same, but there's a, there's a difference. In conversation, no, in conversation activity, you don't work on grammar. All in conversation right. activity, you only work on vocabulary. So yeah. that's important to know. In conversation activity or lesson plan, you only work on vocabulary and functions. All right. Maybe you so, review grammar, but not grammar. But in lesson plan for four skills, yes, you work on grammar too. Okay. Okay. My question is um, uh, that uh, when we make uh, 10 uh, conversation activities, and after so that, if you want to, I'm, I'm very sorry for interruption. If you want to work about conversation activity, I just want to stop the recording. Give me a minute, please. Sure. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, if we are making 10 conversation activities for the assignment, is this possible that uh, 